I am sitting here at the best part of 10 years after recording my first Oblivion Let's Play video thing, my bob, the first episode of the only video series I've ever made that became semi-popular. I'm being facetious, but truly it's the only one that for a few years afterwards people would make comments like, when's Oblivion coming back? I liked Oblivion, that sort of thing. Um, and if you told me in like September 2012 that 10 years later we would still not be sure when Elder Scrolls 6 was coming out, I wouldn't have believed you. Um, and that's just the icing on the cake. My life is unrecognisable in a lot of ways uh, from when I made these videos. Um, I'm almost literally a different person. I am unrecognisable ideologically, frankly. Um, I've moved house possibly eight times since this video came out. Well, it's more like six. Okay, let's say, let's say six, to be honest. Because this would have been during... It was in between like my first and second year of uni, I'm almost certain. And this is my same headset I use for the entire series as well, I'm pretty sure. Um, this is no longer my primary headset, I mainly just use it for recording and for work calls. Because it is very old. Um, I'm recording this audio on the same crap top which has never died. It is purely for writing and recording audio these days. Uh, it's one of those computers where it just mysteriously seems to always be running out of storage and I can't seem to figure out why because there's not much installed on it anymore. And obviously I know you can de- You know what possibly the problem is? It doesn't seem to want to defrag properly anymore. Um, so th th the laptop is even older than the, Liv the Oblivion series. But um, I spent a couple of weeks having the videos in the background recently because I wanted, I had this idea. I'm always trying to think of fun video ideas that I haven't tried before and it occurred to me that one of the only video series I've ever done that made any kind of small, tiny, insignificant splash on YouTube was the Oblivion series and in a lot of ways I can't stand to watch these videos anymore and I'm being facetious when I say that but I genuinely do find it really hard to listen to a lot of my old videos. I'm so different than how I was at the time. I think, you know, without boasting too much I like to think I'm a better person. <laughs> I think everyone likes to think they become a better person with age, you know. Um, but I had an indescribable amount of fun making these videos. I think the reason above anything else that these videos became certainly one of my favourites for a long time was just because I genuinely had so much fun making them um, and looking back I, I, I you know I, I genuinely I don't regret making the videos I regret a lot of individual elements of the videos for instance um, I would never today basically do a series with like hardcore mods, you know, except as like a one-off or something. If I was making this series today, not only would you not get any of the fun like technical hiccups, or at least nearly as often, I would not have installed mods that make the game considerably harder and more grindy. And I almost immediately realised my mistake, because there are a lot of episodes where I mention cutting footage out of me just doing boring shit in the background. Um, I think part of my original idea had been to do like a permadeath run as well, which uh, fell apart pretty quickly when I remembered I was using the mods. Um, the mods do make it more interesting in the short term because it makes it slightly more like, you know, just playing vanilla Oblivion, there's a million billion videos about that, whereas playing with Oscuro's Oblivion overhaul is at least somewhat unusual. Um, crikey, Oblivion... <laughs> Oblivion has not aged super well to look at at the best of times and looking at me playing in 4x3 it's running shockingly well at the moment in the footage that I'm watching and I am actually watching it in the background right now um, it's running surprisingly well but that's because we're in a small room in a cave and as soon as you go outside the frame rate just tanks I remember there was actually even a mod I had to install because the, the water is just really glitchy looking if you turn the settings down and if you have an old laptop like this, the water would look really glitchy and there was a setting that basically caused it to look less shit without actually looking good. It just doesn't look like it's glitching anymore. It doesn't look like a 
like a Gary's mod missing texture error, you know. Um, th but this this series was also incredibly like this established kind of my video format, my let's play format for years to come, and still influences it when I ever get around to making videos today. Um, um, the idea of kind of having little gimmicks, making up little stories, having little characters. Things like the Wilson thing that we just might have seen on the screen, um, that came up genuinely just in the moment, I'm almost certain. Uh, one thing I will reveal now is, especially at the time, a lot of these videos were not, you know, that they are, they are improv, they're off the cuff, but certain aspects were actually planned. I would have notes I made beforehand, and certain jokes, certain references were actually planned in advance. Um, and one of the issues with the Oblivion series, to be honest, is the fact that it's a game I knew very well. Which can be, I think, for a good Let's Play, you either need to know the game well or not at all. Because if you don't know what you're doing, that's funny and interesting. Seeing someone discover th things for the first time is interesting. But if you do know the game, I think it is better to know it really well. Uh, one of the projects I would love to pick up again is actually my Metal Gear Solid 3 series, which was... <laughs> Got about two hours in and it was tragically cut short by computer problems, and I would love to try that again uh, with some better hardware. Um, and the reason I want to do that series is because I love Snake Eater. I've played it probably ten times to completion or more across mul almost every version. I've well, Actually, I've played every version of Snake Eater, I'm almost certain, um, including the, the creme de la creme weird 3DS version. But my point is... I think you can really tell, even when I'm making fun of Oblivion in this series, I do have a lot of fondness for it. And I hadn't, I'm, I'm almost certain I hadn't played Skyrim when I recorded these videos. And I'm really questioning that now. I'm really questioning that. Oh god. No, I think I'm wrong. I think I had played Skyrim, I just hadn't... I had no way of recording it, because I had Skyrim on PS3, which is apparently a famously, like, balked version. It had a very significant bug in it. Um, but I, I had no way of recording PS3 until several years after this video came out. The original Oblivion series. Um, I actually, I remember transferring... I make a joke out of it, but much, much later in the series, or like episode 30 or something, I actually got a much better computer, and I made the surgical transfer all the files from the crap top onto the new computer and it shockingly seemed to work and I was very impressed by that. Um, one thing watching these videos again I was impressed by is how many like little motions with the cursor and the camera and stuff I make to kind of time with uh, silly comments and stuff and that's a lot more effort than I would generally go to today. I think over time I got better at like just rambling in a more natural way. I think some of my dialogue feels forced in these old videos, like I'm kind of scared of going two seconds without saying something. I'm putting too much like forced energy into things. I'm also edgier back then, which is funny to say because these days I will still make jokes which I consider edgy, but back then I was like even more politically clueless than I am now, so I would kind of make some punching down jokes. There is there are a couple of slurs in my old videos which I very much regret, and that's just called getting old. You know, I'm almost, I'm turning 30 in like six months, and, you know, staring down the barrel of 30 really, I know it doesn't mean anything really, but it does make you reevaluate some things. Um, and I do feel nostalgic. Um, I, I already felt nostalgic for Oblivion when I made these videos, and now I feel nostalgic for the Oblivion video series I made years after playing Oblivion, you know. Um, I have actually played a very small amount of Oblivion um, using the PlayStation Now streaming service on PS4 and such, um, which is, again, probably the worst possible way to play Oblivion, but it is convenient because you can just sit down, press the button, and you're playing, and there's no need to install anything. It's just very internet-dependent, obviously. Streaming games is really a very inadequate way of playing games, but it is kind of cool just to be able to press the button and you're going and you don't have to install anything. Uh, you don't even have to put the disc in, it's it's just only the main thing is the internet connection. Um, 
Um, I was also impressed in these old videos the amount of times I would write little text jokes on the screen. Um, something I used to do a lot more that I really don't do now is I would actually watch the footage back more than once. I would watch the videos sometimes multiple times and that was partly just the novelty of making Let's Plays that were actually watchable and somewhat entertaining was still fresh at the time. Um, it would be more rare, I, I think I think it's an interesting kind of thought process because on the one hand I think my standards have gone up but on the other hand I, you could argue my standards, I think I've got more confident that if I make a video I, I, I am actually going to be interested, so long as I'm having fun. There have been video projects that I've got like 20 minutes in and given up because I'm just not having fun in any way and that translates into the banter. Um, there are also um, different kinds of Let's Plays from my experience. And I don't watch nearly as many Let's Plays. Um, all throughout uni, especially, I, w I, my, I would even say my main sort of video content that I would eat, eat, you know what I mean, would be other people's Let's Plays. Um, you know, Jesse Cox, uh, Nerd Cubed, several others, they just spring to mind. Um, and I just don't do that hardly ever anymore, um, and if I do, I don't feel the need. I think as you get older, your time does feel more precious, um, and uh, I know I'm saying that as if turning 30 is like me getting a pension, but you know what I mean? Um, uh, and I think I have wanted many times to go back and do some sort of conclusion to the Oblivion series, but I've never known what to do because I have really kind of cornered myself with the fucking mods. The only thing I guess I could do is, because I can't uninstall the mods even without worrying about fucking it all up somehow, and my only theory would be to like go finish the main quest is kind of the obvious thing to do, which would take a while, but if I were to just completely embrace cheating and just like you can do the console command like slash kill on everyone and just beat the game that way, that'd be amazing. Probably be funny for about five minutes and then get tedious after that, but um, I do admire the amount of just kind of, uh, you know, really embracing the spirit of Oblivion. I guess I just kind of made my own fun and just went off on my own adventure for most of the time. Um, I decided early on I wanted to at least visit all of the cities. Um, and I think I th think I accomplished that. I'm pretty sure Leowin was the last city I got to because it's all the way down south. Um, I've never liked how in Vanilla Oblivion it lets you just teleport to all the cities straight away. It's the only exception to the fast travel rule where you have to at least be to a place once in order to travel there. Um, and Leowin is all the way down in the south so it's just it is really irritating to get to the first time, but at least, you know, that makes it f <laughs> By irritating, I mean it's disappointing. Leowin is not an impressive location, so it's to go all to all that effort and then turn up at a pretty b boring looking town is disappointing. Um, I was trying to reflect on some of my favourite moments in the series, um, and a lot of them are just Oblivion. I think Oblivion is a very good candidate for a Let's Play because, um, Again, when you've done as many of these kinds of videos as I have, you do get an idea of like... Because back in the day, people would actually kind of recommend games to me, and I'd say, oh, you know, I'll think about it, but I'm not sure it would actually lend itself to to commentary. Like, um, I'd say Deus Ex, the original Deus Ex is another version of this. I think, I think a really great Let's Play game, and you can do a Let's Play of anything anyway, but I think Oblivion is one of those games where it kind of has the perfect combination of... It has some genuinely interesting stories that you can get caught up in, but it also is also just a really janky, wonky mess, basically. Um, and I'd say the same thing about Hitman VR, which is my latest Let's Play I'd really like to finish. I've only got two more episodes, and then I can say I've beaten Hitman, if, even though there's two more games that you can then play in the series. But, you know, if I've, if I've played two more levels, I, I can say I've, fe I've beaten the game, air quotes. Um... And, and did I mention Deus Ex, I think, as a game like that, where again, it's, it's, I think especially with those older games like Oblivion and Deus Ex, which it sounds funny to put them in the same sentence, but um, they just have that same kind of like genuinely good stories, but also just really wonky and silly. It's very easy to make your own fun in a game like that. Um, that and that's why Hitman is so much fun, because 
again, those are all games I love as well. I, I, even though I think Oblivion has aged ungracefully for the most part, uh, you know, criticise Skyrim all you like, but it did improve a lot of things over Oblivion. I, I fucking, I fucking hate the vanilla Oblivion levelling system, which I definitely complain about in this series enough. Um, yeah, there's some casual misogyny in these old videos, which I would definitely not uh, engage in today, but... Um, sorry, I was trying to think of some of my favourite moments in the series, and one of them is definitely... Um, there's that strange bug where I, I so on, in an earlier quest um, for the Fighters Guild, you have these three people who you like are friends with, and they help you clear out a mine of goblins. And then there's a really strange bug where for some reason they they seem to turn up. Whenever you get arrested, those those characters will appear outside the jail. And by pure coincidence, I thought it would be funny to name them after the A team. So when I got when I got when I got arrested for whatever reason and ended up outside the jail, the A team appeared. You know, Face Man, Hannibal, and and B A appeared with me outside the prison, and I was like, "Oh my God, I've been rescued by the A team." I couldn't. I couldn't have planned that. I I had no thought that that would happen. <laughs> that was one of those wonderful ma magical coincidences. Um. It helps that the comedy of this is mostly an accident, so it feels less like I'm boasting. Like, I didn't, could never have planned that. That was, like, five episodes apart or something as well. There was no logical connection between those two events. Um, what else happened? This also, um, um, I think one of the best things that ever happened in the series was, was getting Martin to just follow me around, because at a certain point in the main quest, you gain Martin as an essential follower, which means he can never die. He always just gets back up again. And he's not super good, but early on he is actually really useful. And there's no reason not to have him with you, because he can't die, so... Um... I can't even remember if he ever actually, like, left... I think eventually I got to the quest where he leaves again. I've just all spat on my computer, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's still one of my favourite kind of jokes in a Let's Play, is to just randomly comment on something that's happened in the real life, in, in the real world. I'm just putting some disinfectant and a, and a wipe to get rid of that. I just get so passionate, you know, th about these video games. Um, what was another funny one that happened? <laughs> Sorry, I, I I had one, and then that I had another funny thing, and then that happened. Um, actually, you know what I will do is I'll actually look at my notes because I actually. In old-fashioned style, I actually made some notes just for this particular occasion. Where are you? Fucking, I've got a short story summary in here. This is just on my phone. It's funny, at the time, I would do everything on this laptop, especially while I was at uni. It was many years, it was, it was only like 2015 I got a smartphone. And it wasn't a fancy one or anything. But uh, there's there's my life before smartphones and my life after smartphones. Yeah, so I want to talk um, just based on the notes here for a second. I want to talk about the heart, the the various technical problems in the video in the in the video series. And to be honest, um, it is hard to overstate how just barely the game ran on this crap top. Um, to be fair, it ran okay on the crap top. A big part of the problem was just that um, I was almost certain I was recording the game with Fraps back in the day, the full version of Fraps. Um, um, but but when, you, when you would run Fraps on this computer, it would make, it would slow everything down significantly. If you, it would literally cut like 10 frames. Um, when which when you're only recording in 30 is is bad um, so it wasn't so bad if the game was running faster than that you wouldn't notice in the recording really if the game was running faster than that but any time the the frame rate was already chugging you could really feel it in the video um, but as as and that's something that I would pretty much never do today because I have the I have the power I have the technology I have the equipment to run games better than that um, even when recording, and especially on consoles now, rec recording on consoles is just so kick-ass. Um, 
one of the things I like about the PS5 that no one no one else cares about is how easy it is to just casually hold the button down and pick whatever duration of video you want to have recorded. Like it'll record up to an hour of like a gorgeous 60 FPS 1080p footage, which is more than I ever want. You know, 720, 30 is what you know most. I don't, especially for something as long as a Let's Play. Does anyone really care about watching it in 4K? 60 FPS. Um, um, but um, I, I, I think the technical issues are actually a real kind of key part of what makes these videos so fun to look at now is because <laughs> it's not something I would have happen anymore. It's, it's the fact that there are so many funny things that happen just as a result of me trying to get around the um, the technical issues. Um, there is a very funny moment, I think, where I go back to the arena much later on, and I do this little nostalgic speech about, oh, the arena, remember this from like 20 episodes ago? Ah, oh. and I turn around, <laughs> and Martin's face has some sort of lighting bug, so he looks all red in the face, uh, and it, it just it genuinely caught me so off guard. Oh, another of the best things that ever happened, actually, is, um, when I was in uh, Coral, I think, and I go into a house, and there's no one there when I open the door, but that's because the lizard lady is like hiding behind the door, and so she she takes one step forward and does that oblivion thing where she engages you in conversation, which swings the camera around and zooms into her face, and she says hello, and I go meh, <laughs> and that was a 100 genuine percent. A 100 genuine percent, that was a 100 percent genuine panicked reaction, that was a genuine jump scare. There is at least one video of me somewhere jumping up my own shadow as well, so, uh, not that, jumping up my own shadow in a video game. It's it's really funny, um, just, uh, I think Let's Plays made me better at horror games, this is a brief tangent, but I genuinely, like, if I hadn't suffered through things like Soma and Amnesia for the sake of the channel, I wouldn't be terrible at horror games these days. I'm still not great at them. I was playing Amnesia Rebirth much more recently with my partner, and I had to shut the game off after about an hour every time because I was getting too intense. Um, you know, watching these videos again, it really reminds me how fucking long the Oblivion tutorial is. Jesus Christ. People complain about the Skyrim to, like opening sequence, but at least you can just speed. At least it's exciting. <laughs> at least it's exciting in comparison. Um, it's surprising to me that Oblivion has never been re-released. I mean, they've done you know quote unquote re-releases where it's the same version of the game with just the uh, content you know packed in. You know, but they've never. There is no PS4 port of Oblivion or anything. And I guess it's partly just because Skyrim was even more successful and easy, and as and being a more recent game on a more modern engine, it's easy to port. It's a little sad that games like Oblivion and especially Morrowind will just, you know, eventually maybe. But I, it, the more time that passes, the more I worry that games like this are just going to be so much more effort to uh, port onto modern devices, and it's just going to be entirely dependent on um, uh, fans doing fan ports and unofficial patches, and in some cases debatably breaking the law, you know, because unfortunately the copyright is kind of bullshit. Uh, <laughs> this is why we need to seize the means of video game production for the people, um, so that we can all play Oblivion again. No, no, the traditional Oblivion reinstallation process is to get really excited, get confused trying to install a bunch of mods, and then by the time you figure it all out, all out and the game seems to work properly, you, you've gotten bored and you just play Skyrim again instead. <laughs> uh, that's exactly what would happen. Uh, sorry, I had another excellent note that I want to read again. Uh, Oh fuck, shockingly, I think I've actually touched on all of my notes. <laughs> Damn it. Unprepared as always. Um Yeah, there was a there was a time when I kind of struggled to think of a 
I, I said before that this series really did influence the content I made for years, and that's still true, but I also kind of struggled to think of anything to follow Oblivion up with for a while. Um, partly because I was having so much fun, but also partly because I just couldn't think of another game that kind of lent itself so well to the Let's Play format. Um, another, another. I think I mentioned before, um, just, just finding the time and the energy to make something like this. Oh, something else I've done since... <laughs> something else I've done since making this video series is uh, I've written a novel. I've, I've done two drafts of my first novel uh, within, you know, a couple of years of, of these videos coming out. Um, I've tried to come up with second novel ideas many times. Um, I've done several short stories. Um, I've also tried to get published and pretty much given up because getting published is kind of bullshit and like I guess this is tangentially relevant in that you know it's difficult to find the energy to do something even that you enjoy and want to share with the world it's difficult to find that energy when you have a job and <laughs> and you know people in your life you need to spend time with and all this shit you know um, I didn't mean for this series to be so sad feeling. Hang on, this is a happy, happy video. Um, I really, um, even even the episode titles, I just don't, I put a lot of effort into the episode titles for a long time in my videos and then I realised they were just getting increasingly desperate and nonsensical and um, f clickbaity to be honest. Um, Oh, I just remembered something. I remember I, I, after this, after I did fifty episodes of Oblivion, and then I was just completely out of ideas. I didn't know what to do, so I actually made a little video that was like help, help Rexy, you know, help Rexy's adventure continue. And I said, you know, I want to kind of bring the series to an end in some way, but I'm not sure what to do. And people gave me all these ideas and I thought most of them were good. I And I and I even, you know, I even had this idea of kind of like um, kicking the can down the road and magically transferring Rexy into the Skyrim realm. Because by like 2014, I had a decent PC and I could have done that. I could have contrived some story. I had a very funny idea where um, Rexy would receive a, a message in the post that his little that the little cack shack in um Imperial City he'd receive a message with a bottle from Sean Bean. <laughs> and Sean Bean would say, Oh I'm going away, Rexy, but please take this as a, a token of my 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 friendship for you. But then Rexy would drink the wine and it would turn out it was poison and and then he would wake up in Skyrim magically as a Skyrim Argonian, and I never got around to doing that, but I, I, I really enjoyed the idea of it, so it, it was tempting. Um, yeah, Obliv it's, I guess Oblivion is something I regret not finishing, but I'm still not sure how I would even go about finishing it, and the more time has gone on, the harder it has become to imagine finding a way to finish it. To finish it. And I think that's fine, you know, it's it's fine to just start something, have a lot of fun with it, and then just lose interest and move on. And, um, what, what's, let me quickly look at what, what, what happens in the last ever episode, because I only made it to like episode 30 in my rewatch. All the fan art. I didn't even realise I got to 2016, to be honest, that feels like such a long time ago. Yeah, something fairly momentous was going on in my life about this time. And just a few months later, my life would really be unrecognisable. So it's really funny to um, to watch these videos from back when I was closeted, to be honest. And just... Uh... Oh, I went... Yeah, this is this is me and Leia when Leywin I'm watching here. This probably won't be in the video. But it's me and Leia when I'm talking to a luscious lizard lassie. Um, I still like Lizard Lassies, I'm going to be honest, it's uh, it's not as much of an obsession anymore. I do tend to go through obsessions, and I believe it was one of those. I wonder what the last thing I ever, like, what's the last... Oh no, hang on. 
what to do in the next episode. This is the final city we haven't explored yet. And we've yet to be scared off by the creepy people who like to sleep with corpses. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so I think, yeah, I, I wanted to get to episode 50. I was running out of steam. The last, like, five or ten episodes, I was really struggling to kind of think where to go or what to do. Um, and one of the only things I knew I wanted to do was get to episode 50 and also, um, what do you call it, get to all the different cities. Um, and speaking of running out of steam, I think I am running out of steam. I had a brief fantasy of this going on longer, but when I realised I'd run out of notes even to read from, I figured that was not going to happen. Um, so if you've... <laughs> I, I, I enjoyed making this video. I hope it wasn't too sad in places because I don't want you to be sad. I want you to be happy because my life is in a better place than it was, which is funny to say because I'm currently like in a bit of a medical crisis. I'm exaggerating. I, I don't have COVID or anything. It's not cancer or anything, but I'm, I'm, I'm in a bit of a medical place is where I am. And I'm talking to a lot of doctors and getting a lot of needles in me. Um, oh, my skin collapsed um, a few years after the video series ended. Uh, I had a real eczema flare-up, which has never really ended. It's 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 never been as bad as it was a few years ago, but it's never. It's just been something I live with now. Is managing my fucking eczema. I like to say that every couple of years my skin just dies and I have to grow it back. Um. But I, I wanted to make this video, and not just because I'd forgotten to record a video for May and wanted to make some quick lazy content. That's a conspiracy theory, Alex Jones. I don't think you should be go around spreading such nonsense. You might get in trouble. But I had fun making this, just like I had fun making Oblivion back in the day. Um, I genuinely would... I think the best thing I've come up with is I don't really want to finish Oblivion anymore because it's been too long and I don't... I just can't muster the thought process for it. But the best thing I can do is kind of take that energy and I want to finish Hitman VR because it's just so close. It's just two episodes. It's just recording a VR game is actually a surprising amount of effort because you just physically have more shit to strap to your face, literally, and, and, and faff about with. Um, but, but after that, I might seriously try to look into... Um, and I'm not making promises, but I would really like to try and give that that Snake Eater series another go one day. That's kind of my magnum opus now after Hitman. And I want to take some of that Oblivion energy. None of these series would have happened, I don't think. I'd, if I hadn't hit upon something as fun as the Oblivion series, I don't think any of these other Let's Plays would have ever happened. And that doesn't mean I love every single video I've ever made since then. I thought that recent one about... Uh, Submerged, or whatever the game's called, was pretty fucking dire, to be honest. <laughs> but we have good, we have good times here on this channel. Oh, I, I no longer do any of the like. I try, I got the channel monetized for a couple of years, but it was just such absolutely nothing money. And then one day they told me that my views were so pathetic that they weren't going to monetize it anymore, and that I'm no longer with the network as of like three years ago. Um, I don't miss that because, you know, I'd already been employed by like three years at that point and I knew what actual money tasted like and I was like, yeah, okay, bye. Uh, you know. Maybe ten years from now, I'll do a retrospective on this retrospective and then, you know, c c society will implode in a paradox, in a black hole. And maybe then, finally, Elder Scrolls Six will come out. <laughs> uh Whoever, whoever Rex Butin and Wilson are right now, I hope they're having fun. They're probably still trapped in a realm of oblivion because I keep forgetting to quick save, to be honest. 